I tell you, this is what worship means. We give him the glory. I want to encourage these prophetic people who have a little bit of a weakness. So I want to tell you what is that. When a worship is going on, we are tempted to hear God speak to me. God give. Complete the worship. Why are you in between asking Lord speak to me first? Speak to me. Let me feel this. Let me feel that. We are here to worship him. We are not to feel anything. God will give you a word when he wants to give you a word. Because we want these uh, needles, you see, Lord, am I worshipping right? You are right. So we get distracted in between. And that is the reason why instead of worshipping, we are quiet and we are trying to feel. Get out of that. Give him all the glory. Give him all the attention. Tell your mind to shut up. I'm worshipping the king. Imagine if we could come with that one focus, one heart, one mind. That even my spirit should not distract me from worshipping the king. How important that is. Of all the people who, who must know how to worship the Lord more is the prophetic community. So there's no excuse, you know. Do not forget our basics ABC. Worship the Lord God with all your heart, soul and mind. That is a requirement of the prophetic community. We have no right to tell others to, to worship if we ourselves digress into the same thing. And that is the side effects or the distraction of the prophetic people because they're all the time wanting to hear something. The only thing your heart must tell you, worship the king. Amen? In the last two and a half or three weeks, Our ministry and those people that I know in many different ways have been battling many, many challenges, unusual challenges in the last given three weeks. I've been praying with them, I'm praying for them. And our ministry in Singapore, our ministry here, different, different challenges. Like as though, you know, when you step into an a cockroach invested area. You don't know which one to catch. Everything is running from everywhere. Wow, suddenly there is a infestation everywhere you see. And the enemy uses that opportunity to distract and burden the people of God because God is about to do something. The devil doesn't know what the something is. He sees the activity in the camp and then he distracts us. I've been praying and praying and praying. Why is there no breakthrough this time? Until yesterday morning at 8.30 in the morning, the Spirit of the Lord God came upon me and the Lord spoke to me about Myrtle Beach. So I knew this is why we are battling all this time. So I want to share with you the prophecy first, and we're going to go into the word proper. Amen? Now again, as I want to encourage you, the prophetic community must love the word of God more than any other group of people. Because without the word, there is nothing for you to work with. The testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Amen? So when you don't love the word of God, to study the word of God, nothing else comes. But you see, sometimes what happens? We shut the word too fast. Let's go into the spirit of prayer. When the word is not complete, the spirit will not come. It is Jesus who speaks through the word. Amen. amen. Thank you for the very loud amen. I was so touched. Amen. Oh, you are here with me. <laughs> amen. amen. I want to thank the Lord that without our team, I'm incomplete. I want to thank the Lord. For all these guys who are here, especially our sons and daughters who are here with us, ministering together with us, I want to thank the Lord for each one. For welcoming me into Myrtle Beach, Timothy and all the Myrtle group, thank you. God bless you. This is what the Lord says, I am the ruling king. 
The Lord has to remind us over and over and over again who is actually ruling the earth. Because we forget. We get so distracted with the ruling and the principalities and the powers. We forget to keep even, we forget to even acknowledge my king is actually ruling. You see how sometimes we can just go off focus? Because we are fighting the battle with the powers and the principalities who will pretend as though they are ruling. But the keys of the kingdom is with us. Not with him. He's pretending by distracting the church with our needs and with our gifts and with our anointings and we take our eyes from the king. And so when the Lord said with loud and a thundering statement, I am the ruling king, I tell you my friend. Everything on me just broke loose. Because you know what? I'm standing with the king. I'm standing with the king. He shall prepare a table before your enemy. Hello? It doesn't matter which level or degree of principality is doing whatever you want to do. Continue. I'm serving my king. No other king can stand with me, says the Lord, and take my place, says the Lord. I will destroy and break into pieces every other spirit that will try to take my place. But my people have turned their backs on me. Their spirit is turned away from me. And the Lord asked me a question, tell me, why must I pour my spirit to a people whose backs are facing me? Yet I have not forgotten that my mercy is upon the city. As the sun rises from the east, once again my glory will shine. I will cause waves of my power to come and sound the trumpet upon my people that those who hear my voice will come to me. The Lord said, enter into the depths of intercession and travail and pray for my sons and daughters to rise up. Many want to build their ministry instead of doing my will. The axe is set to the root and the tree that does not bear good fruit will be uprooted, says the Lord. And then the Lord said, you see, many times when he speaks to me, my emotions get very stirred up because I'm picking up his emotion, I'm picking up his voice. My people want to have a fightless victory. They are forever fighting the opposing spirits instead of being planted and rooted in me. Look at the comparison. We are not paying attention to how deep we are growing. We are all the time fighting the opposing spirits from a weakening position. When a tree is rooted and planted, when storms come, they will not be uprooted. But my people are too distracted with needs and concerns of daily life and they are not growing in these times of need when they need to be rooted and planted in me and my word. So I made a rule. Uh, so sorry. sorry. Uh, I sh uh, the way he said it is, didn't I make a rule? Abide in me and I will abide in you. Because they are not abiding in me, they can't sense I'm abiding in them. And then in a vision, I saw can you imagine a, a bodybuilder or uh, I, I don't know who is the biggest bodybuilder. I don't know. Every year you got someone new coming up. So let's talk about The Rock. You know who's The Rock? It's not from the Bible. <laughs> it's uh, Mr. Dwayne uh, Johnson. Imagine his big arms. I was used to look like that, but I lost weight, you know. So imagine his arms holding something and twisting and breaking I saw the arm of the Lord in the vision. All the veins are coming and the muscles are showing and, and, and he's twisting and breaking. And I was wondering, what is the Lord twisting and breaking? 
And, it, uh, and then I saw a vision of a female spirit which has a body of a mermaid. I will catch her with my bare hands and squeeze her out till she has no more spot in this place if my people are willing to rise up. So that this seducing spirit is one of the principalities of Myrtle Beach. And then on my hand as I was walking, pacing myself up and down in the room, praying, the sword of Elijah came into my hands. And the Lord said, I've sent you to break and break the power of the enemy and bless the church. Many of the Building, many of the buildings and churches are weak in their foundation, says the Lord. They need to restore their foundation of my word and my spirit. And the Lord is looking for that one man who can stand in the gap. Then I saw serpents and scorpions. And the Lord showed me, what does these two have in common? They have poison, both of them. One hits from the front. The other one strikes from the back. When the poison is injected inside, the venom, the first thing that people will experience is hallucination. And the Lord said, my people are hallucinating with the thoughts and the mind of the enemy and they still don't know the difference yet. Jesus said of Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You do not mind the things of the Spirit. How is that possible? He was so close to Jesus. At that moment, he still can pick up the wrong sign. How is that possible, you see? You are just how many feet away from Jesus talking to him. His glory is radiating. Yet he, he uh, Peter, he's picking up a signal from another kind that Jesus did not even delay, mind the manners, or wonder what he will feel about it. He immediately put a nail right to the head and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You do not mind the things of the Spirit. You see what happens when we don't mind the things of the Spirit? It is so easy to switch with a spirit of hallucination. You speak the mind of the enemy. And the Lord said, my people are speaking like that sometimes. They are speaking the voice of what the Spirit is doing. They speak the voice of what the culture of the place is doing. They speak the voice of defeat and disappointment. They speak the voice oh, I've been there, used to do, instead of speaking the voice of God. And then very interestingly, the Lord showed me a vision of a little baby. You know, within four or five months, the baby will start te teething, correct? And have you seen a baby teething or not? Why are you looking at me the strange look? What, <laughs> what is he trying to say? You know the teething? The teeth comes up. Oh, okay. What do you do when a baby is teething? In fact, you don't have to do anything. The baby will pull everything to bite. It is a DNA. You don't know where this baby knows all that. It is an automatic response. Anything you give, it will start biting, including your hand. Mummy will be crying because now mummy is feeding milk. Baby is biting. It's not just drinking. Suddenly it's biting because it doesn't know when to bite and when not to bite. And so you have all the teething rubbers. I was wondering, why is the Lord showing me this vision? And the Lord said, even the youngest baby in the meeting will be given the power to bite the enemy. Do you realize? <laughs> oh my, my eyes was filled with tears. Even the youngest person in the meeting will be given the authority and the power. You know why? Because you are drinking of the divine milk. You are being cradled by the hands of the Almighty. As long as I'm asking you to bite, 
no weapon which form against you shall prosper. My brothers and sisters, it is time to quit trying to build our ministry and do what Jesus wants us to do. We have to do what God wants us to do. We have to be so focused in His will. Once in a time of intercession, I was with Jesus in the glories of heaven, lifted above the principalities and powers. While I was praying, the Lord said, now look at this small church. The small church is praying. In a small church, there are needs. Every single thing they learn how to pray. Everybody starts the same way, isn't it? Until they are being blessed. Until the church starts growing. Until fame starts coming. Until people start noticing. Until miracles start happening. Until money starts coming in. <laughs> And so this small church is praying and praying and praying. And then the Lord showed me, now I wanted to see what the demons are doing. The principality is making a conference there. How to stop this church? This small church is more powerful in prayer than all the big churches put together. Now I've got nothing wrong with big churches, okay? The only problem is when you become big, we focus in becoming big, Focus in people management and we forget about spirit management. We think that uh, prayer and fasting are for foundational reasons and it's not supposed to be the ongoing reason. That is why whenever a church grows, at least 10% of the people coming in must always be given or a department has to be set for prayer, fasting and intercession ministry. Don't touch them for any other reason. Park them there because they are your gatekeepers. The moment you remove the gatekeepers away, the church closes down. And the Lord said, now you look what the demons are going to do. Are you ready? Yes. You know what the demons did? Release some souls to this church. Because see, the, the demons are holding back, right? Holding back the growth, holding back the blessing. So this church is not letting go. Fighting and praying and Winning souls. Now, the only way to stop this church from praying that much is to give them some souls. Release from all the souls they are holding back from hell. Give them something. And suddenly this church is growing. They have stopped praying. The moment they stop praying, they become weak. And then the Lord told me, even when success, success comes to us and growth comes to us, you got to be discerning where is this coming from. Don't get distracted in these end times. The church of Ephesus and Laodicea, they were very rich churches. Yet they went down the drain. They lost the importance of spirituality. And they were focused on that bigness. They were focused on this and they focused on that. So COVID is an important marker of the true strength of a church. Why? Because people are no longer coming. So we don't have flatted scales, markers. We have the real marker now. Who are the people who are coming to church anymore? Who are the real prayer warriors? Who are the real givers? How big and strong the church actually is. They are the true disciples, isn't it? Thank God for another reason the borders are closed so that the local guys will rise up instead of always becoming a conference buff. <laughs> Forever inviting others and we forget that God has anointed you to become that voice. Why? The people don't want to hear me. They want to hear his voice. So if I want the church to grow, get him to come. And we forget who is building the church. And so COVID... Thanks to COVID, speakers are afraid to come out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, a true man of God will come. Positive speakers will not come. Are you with me? 
So I'm so thankful. Because of COVID, now we are paying attention to our sons and daughters to rise up. The pulpit is not littered by conference speakers. It is filled with sons and daughters whom God is raising up. We want to hear what God is speaking. So we thank God. In what the enemy wants to achieve, God does a lot more. Amen? And when things are not moving, what happens? Prayer is restored back into the church. When things are not happening is what is happening, prayer is coming back in the church. When you got nothing more to do, prayer is the only key to go. We are going back to the roots of prayer and somebody say amen. Amen. If there is something so good we must be, something we must always learn, something that we must never let go, is the spirit of prayer. That is why Paul says, pray with all kinds of prayers. There are so many skills of prayer, so many depths of prayer, But the enemy, what is the word that I wanted to use? He, like a parasite, he knows how to disable humans. The way to disable humans is to give them the parasite of pride. So even praying more, you can have a pride of a prayer warrior. You know how much I can pray? That's it, you die. Right in the sanctuary on the throne, you can die. Are you with me? My brothers and sisters, this is the time to walk in humility before the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Now turn with me to Isaiah chapter 27. We will build our base of what the Lord said and the word he told me speak. Now this is the second time I'm speaking this uh, passage. Isaiah chapter 27. Usually when I've spoken a message somewhere, I don't like to speak about it again. Unless the Lord tells me, no, this is for them. You speak about it again. Isaiah chapter 27. Verse 1, are you ready? In that day, oh, I see. The Lord will punish with what? His sword. I have seen the sword of the Lord. It is something so difficult to define. It is more admirable than the sword of King Arthur. And in fact, I was distracted when I was looking at the sword, not on the admiration of the sword, but the way the Lord was holding it. The beauty of his hand. Like as though you are this apprentice who's there watching the master. How is he holding it? I've been given different swords. But I remember in Japan when the Lord told me, now I will teach you how to swing and how to use that sword. Even that we have to be taught. Because every movement is power in the spirit. Amen? Amen. How much we must learn our reliance on the Holy Spirit instead of running away and doing our own thing? Are you with me? What if, we, what if God wants us to remain small and be faithful? Will we do that? See, we forget, you see, we always think that it must be big. If God is there with you, it must be big. Then Jesus will lose all the game. He paid attention to faithfulness and the depth he was building on his disciples and the goal was his de- for his disciples to make it big, not for himself. If every pastor, if every spiritual father we have, will have that level of purity in their hearts, our sons and daughters will rise up. Not the special ones, but the weaker ones. Because the Bible says even the weak will put a hundred, a thousand to shame. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so this is that time. In that day, the Lord will punish with his sword, his fierce, great, and powerful sword, leviath. And now pay attention to the serpent. Three types of serpents. Being mentioned is just one verse. The Leviathan, the gliding serpent, 
Leviathan, the coiling serpent, and he will slay the monster of the sea. I wonder why this was given to me about Myrtle Beach. Therefore, as I'm speaking, I plead the blood of the Lamb over you, your family, your children, your properties, on all of your interest. No weapon which form against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. In that day, what is that day? That means God has appointed a day to punish. We don't want punishment. We just want revival. You think that God will coexist with what the enemy is doing? The earth belongs to God and the fullness thereof. Amen? Amen. See, the moment you think God will not clean up his city, then you are thinking that God coexists with sin. The moment Adam and Eve allowed the serpent to stain the purity of their communication with God, the Lord said, get out of my garden. You're done. There is no other way you can come in without my blood. Because there's no coexisting. James said that in the Bible, the friendship with the world is enmity with God. There is no two ways about it. I will punish in that day. Therefore I declare in the name of Jesus, God has appointed a day for Myrtle Beach. And it's not that I'm here to declare, maybe I'm already, I'm just declaring what has been said all the time. But it's not what God can do. He's looking for his army. He's looking for his people. He's looking for, oh yeah, God, that's a great word. What must we do to activate the word? Can you tell me in America, I don't know, that's what I'm asking. How many years must you study to become a doctor? Eight. In Singapore, it's about seven. Years about eight. Why eight? Why not two years? I don't think so. You will, you will even show your hand to anybody who studied for two years, man. So because if you have an intention to become a doctor, then you have to invest your life at least about eight years of expertise and studies and housemanship and be tested in all levels that is medicine in its focus so that one day you can become a doctor. That means there is a time that you are sowing by the time you see the fruit of your labor is eight years. Well, what about the church? Are we patient enough to let the prophecy germinate? To coordinate our ministry so that the word of God will fulfill? When God says, I will raise an army, you're wondering where is the army? See, God says, when I say I'm going to raise an army, then you have to start teaching the word. You have to start producing disciples. You have to start teaching them how to be faithful. You have to start sowing the word into their life. That is the job of every pastor. Because there is no instant disciples. You can't make disciples in a year. Are you with me? Yeah. See, we are not willing to work hard enough, deep enough, without distraction, the assignment God has given to us so that the army can rise up and be ready at a time when the Lord is about to unleash His power. But you know what's happening? When the Lord is about... To unleash the power, <laughs> the army is not even standing behind him. Because they are too busy. Lord, where are you? Where is my anointing? Where is my gifts? When are you so in this grow up, bro? I've been teaching you all this time. You didn't pay attention. So you see, even a prophetic community can be so distracted with their gifts. Instead of focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord told me, because my people are facing their backs towards me, so therefore why must I even pour my spirit among them? And you know what God does? 
to put us to shame. He can call me from somewhere else and say, come and do this work. He can call another guy from the street. The fellow that you think is a hopeless gangster who doesn't fear anybody, the Spirit of God changes him to be an apostle overnight. And he'll be going around preaching the gospel. God can do those things. The last shall be the first and the first shall be the last. Therefore, don't lose your race and keep running to where the Lord wants us to run. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Therefore, we cannot say, Lord, I want to be your army. Really? Then go through the process because you can't be made overnight. You cannot grow overnight. There is no instant army in the vineyard of God. It's not about the authority, it's about your moods and your conditionings. It's about learning how to walk above our emotions and the challenges that will happen. And the need for money, you know, we all need money. What if the Lord tells you now, move, set everything and just come over oh, God, but, but, what but? When I say move, everything follows you, right? But we have said more buts to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yet we say we are believing anything Jesus say. Are you sure? Let's go through the test now. Let's do a checklist. Are you willing to be what God wants him to be? Why must we be part of this group that has turned their backs towards God? The army doesn't raise up. In that day, that means God has appointed a day and that day will bring rebuke, correction and restoration. That day will be a day of challenge. It will, it, it will be a day of pain. It will be a day of stress. And you know what our people are so used to? They're used to float in their comfort. The moment they have a little stress, I don't want to serve God anymore. The moment there is a little stress, Pastor, we need to step down a little bit so that we can step up with the world a little bit more. Are you sure? Why is that the ministry is the first thing people give up instead of their job? Try doing that. Try thinking about it. Everybody there, Pastor, my wife is expecting, so I have to step down. Hello? Step down from what? Your wife is being blessed because you are serving God. Step down from what? Pastor, we know we have to make our, uh, you know, uh, our, our ends meet. Therefore, I have to do three jobs. So I have to step down from ministry. What can you even believe that God can supernaturally provide for you as you have been faithful in the vineyard of God? God is looking for that group of people. Who is willing to walk and will not give up on building his house. Until there is purity. He will refuse to listen to the prayers of the ungodly. Because we, the moment we say ungodly, we think, oh, that's the people of the world out there. Are you sure? Anything that is opposite to godly is ungodly. He said, even my people have conducted themselves like the wicked, isn't it? Wickedness I found in my church. Didn't the Bible say that? So that means even the people can be wicked. So when you read the word wicked, please don't think it can be outside people. Right within his house. And so God is restoring that purity. If not, his glory will miss us and go somewhere else. My brothers and sisters, I speak with pain and burden, the same burden and pain which you are carrying too. Because we must become the burden bearers of Jesus Christ. I refuse to bear the burden of my ministry. I refuse to bear the burden of anything else. I'm only given to bear the burden of my Lord Jesus Christ. Everything, everything else really is not really a concern. If God has given me $10, then I will know how to do with $10. If he says, son, this month I'm going to give you five, then I'll serve according to the $5. Because you are, God is conditioning us to serve with plenty and with nothing. 
Amen. God is looking whether can he trust his church to walk with him through the fire of wilderness to save the souls which are trapped in the realm of darkness. But we are so distracted with our prosperity, you see. We are so distracted with little gems and little stones and everybody is flocking so that they can lose weight without exercising. I've lost that inch in that glory meeting. Praise God. Can you please exercise? You lose two more inches. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's all that distraction that is coming and we are no longer focusing on what the Lord wants. So easy like little children. Remember our little children? The moment you buy them the toy, they'll never look at you until the toy is broken. <laughs> mommy! Oh, now it's mommy, yeah? Why? Because the toy you bought is broken. And when you take the broken to fix, they'll start crying, thinking you are taking it away from them, but your intention is to fix it back. Whenever God takes things away from you, he wants to fix it back and give it to you. He's not snapping it away from you. Are you with me? In that day, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says in this end time, darkness is supposed to set in. In this end time, distress will come because Jesus, the master prophet, said it. Somebody say amen. amen. Therefore now, in the body of Christ, I must learn how to grow. I must learn how to minister in the sick of the distress. No more the cloud of comfort. There will be distress upon you and I must learn how to hold on to the horns of altar and serve God without giving up. If you want to give up something, give up your eating time. Give up your party time. Give up your hobby time. Maybe you don't have time to bring your son to the uh, baseball game. Ask your friend to help and you go down on your knees and start praying because that's what the enemy wanted to do. Give up on him. Just for a second, if the Lord will give up on us, for that second, imagine what happens to us. Heart doctors, cardiologists, are so concerned if you miss a heartbeat in echogram. Hey, no, it's not normal. You cannot miss a heartbeat. Why not? There are so many beats like 89, 79, uh, heart resting rate. It's okay to miss a beat. Uh, no way, bro. This, <laughs> you can't even miss a bit. How many bits are we missing for Jesus? And you want to still be so fully anointed. How selfish we have become. If the Lord will measure our discipleship to the measurement of his anointing, how many of us will pass the test today? To the accuracy of his will. Therefore, we humble ourselves and say, God, show us mercy. Show us your grace. Touch Myrtle Beach not because we want it to be big, because we are your people on your side. Amen? In that day, that means the day is appointed to us. We have not thought our people the truths of God's word. We are still teaching them when you accept Jesus, you enter into a Cinderella land. <laughs> You enter into a fairy land, everything changes. You know, the pumpkin changes into this and that changes into that and there is this wonderland. You will prosper. And people think, wow, I can see millions right there, brother. Can you see it? Oh, people don't even want to wonder whether it's a soul projecting or whether the spirit is projecting. Nobody's questioning that. Do you get what I'm saying? Hello? Now, I'm not against prosperity. It is fun to be prosperous. You need money to do ministry. It is fun to do what God wants to do when you have the money. I know all about that. But you have to prosper in the right way. Your prosperity must not overtake your relationship with Jesus. Are you with me? Amen. How many of us will dare even to say, God, don't give me more that I will forget you. Don't give me less that I will not even think about you. Give me my daily bread that every day I will thank you. 
But somehow we feel that only when we have a lot more left in the reservoir of our bank, that means God is prospering me. Are you sure? The greatest blessing is when he walks beside your side. The greatest blessing. And God wants to know, is this what you want today? My people have turned their backs. Now I'm talking to you. What do you want to know? The Bible says the sword of the Lord. Oh, I will talk about it maybe another day. Maybe tomorrow we'll see. But I want you to pay attention. To the type of dragons that are coming here. The Leviathan. The sword of the Lord. What kind of sword is that? Easy. Hard. The Bible says there are three qualities of the sword which the Lord is carrying. Hard, great and strong. And if you do a, a Hebrew study, that nothing is good word. Everything is just distress, painful, destruction and judgment. Nothing is really good about the sword of the Lord. Many people tell me that, you know. Ah, I receive a sword from the Lord. Okay, for what? So that he can show off. I carry the sword. You know, I carry the sword. Really, that means you're ready to fight all the time. You'll be in a distress mode. Are you ready for that? The burden and the strength of the church of the Lord is transferred to you. As a sword, you are ready to draw out. Then you will be on an active mode all the time. Are you ready for that? That's what it means when God gives us the sword. Are you with me? We are distracted with the weapons of our warfare. I'm wearing the breastplate. I'm wearing the helmet. I'm wearing this. Are you ready to fight? Because here the Lord said, my people are so glamoured by fightless victory. We are victorious in our room until you step out. Therefore God is reminding us why he has anointed his army. Three manoeuvres of the dragon that I want to pay attention and we want to pray together today. Listen, don't be distracted whether you will get a word, I'll be blessed. We did not come today for that. We are now standing on the Lord's side. Lord, put us on assignment mode. Put us on assignment mode. Tell me what pleases you. And the assignment is not done, then continue until it is done. Amen. Somehow we think that if it's a conference, if it's the word of the Lord, then there will be my time. What if we die to this my time? It's just the Lord's time. That is why I did tell Timothy, brother, are you sure you want me to come? Three types of dragon that is going to come and distract the people of God and God wants us to pay attention. Are we learning something tonight? Number one, the fleeing serpent. So some serpents you cannot just step and kill. It, it, is, it, it masters itself in fleeing. And in the Hebrew, it simply means, I, I don't want to you know, give you this pronunciation and all that. It's, it's called bariak if you really want to know. But it means sight to sight movements. Just like the same, like a, a, a desert cobra. Have you seen a, a snake in the desert? It goes side by side. It doesn't go straight. Have you, see, have you seen a snake? It looks long. Yes? You are American, you have must see. I only saw it in the zoo. <laughs> oh, side by side. You know what happens to side by side? That is the spirit in charge of creating miscommunication. Whenever you speak to them directly, they will say, but I thought you said this. Why are you listening to some other thought when I'm just right in front of your face? Why can't you say, excuse me, is this what you said? No, I didn't say that. But they won't ask you. They are listening to some other communication system. Right in front. 
Even husband and wives can miscommunicate, you know. Right in front of their face, they are screaming so loud at each other, yet they are decoding another voice. When this spirit is at work, miscommunication. What is miscommunication? It's just that you missed to communicate. What we were communicating, you are missing it. So it's called miscommunication. Churches have gone into jealousy mode, fit mode, anger mode, because they just did not understand what the preacher was preaching. But I thought this pastor was saying, really? I think the speakers confirmed it is so loud. What do you mean he thought? What are you thinking? What are you decoding? Straight instructions. Remember, Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you. There's nothing to decode there. This I say unto you. On that day, the very word that I spoke will come and judge you. Once I was taken to heaven, in this experience that I had, the Lord was speaking something and the scriptures was flashing forward, flashing forward. Flashing is as though like you're watching a movie, you know. Scriptures are just like a projector. Uh, you know, when a preacher is preaching, the, they flash forward. Same way, when Jesus is speaking, the scriptures related to his speech is flashing forward. And I was asking the Lord, why are the scriptures flashing forward? On that day of judgment, when I judge my people, the very words that I spoke will judge them. No one can say, I don't know. The Lord will say, well, it was right in your hand. The only problem is, we don't believe that Jesus will do what he said he will do. Are you with me? We don't believe because we have a Western version of uh, 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 Jesus. The another guy have another version of Jesus. No, that's only one version, his version. So this miscommunication is a serpent that goes side by side, side conversations, which creates bitterness and embittered reaction. And you know what? Remember, offended people will offend others. Hurts and hurting others. Very interesting is the word in Hebrew, bariak, simply means it's side door. Very interesting word, side door. Because you can never compute serpent to a side door. And you know what Paul said, or Peter said, or sorry, Jude said in chapter 1, Jude chapter 1 verse 4, for certain men, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, very powerful. For certain men have crept in uh, stealthfully, in other words, secretly by a side door, bringing to you wrong teachings to pervert the grace of God so that people will enter into a time of lawless, lawlessness and immorality, denying the Lordship of Jesus. In the book of Jude, he talks about side door Thousands of years before Jude mentioned, there is a fleeing serpent called side door communication. Are you listening? And that's what people do when they go into ministries, they go into churches. Some people go there not to support the pastor, but to have another ministry right on their there, and they are creating a side door. You know what I think? I think the pastor is wrong. You mean you came that far to say that? This is the right way. Sight door teaches. It is not about building the your ministry. It is about opening sight door to create miscommunication. Are you with me? This is the work of demonic spirits. It's called the fleeing serpents. And then the second area that the Lord was talking about is the word twisted or coiling. In Hebrew, it's aqualathon. Simply means it is torturous. The Hebrew word of this coiling spirit. And then one day, I, 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 uh, uh, years ago, I, I can't remember when exactly, uh, I was having lunch at home and I decided to flip the channel and it went into Discovery, uh, Discovery Channel. And so happened that day, there was an experiment being done with a python. So what they did was to inject the Python with uh, uh, small communicating devices to measure the strength of its coiling. 
And then they had an artificial uh, mannequin. Mannequin, correct? Yes. Artificial human mannequin. But create enough human sense to it. Putting an artificial heartbeat and creating some flesh and muscles and make it look very real. And the heartbeat inside was beating enough. And so they wanted to measure the strength of this python and what it does. And so there are enough sensors placed throughout the bodies of the python to pick up scientifically the power of its coiling. It's very interesting, man. One slightest movement, one tightness of the coil. One heartbeat that is beating properly, one tightness. Until the heartbeat slows down. And the coil becomes tighter and tighter and tighter until it stops breathing. The moment there is movement, one tight again. He doesn't kill you all one go and, and, and squeezes the person because then you will spoil the meal. The more you breathe, the more I tighten you. Can you imagine a coiling serpent will park itself in a growing church? It will park itself in a revival church. The more you are doing, the more you are climbing up, and it will start tightening itself little by little. Why? My question is not what the serpent is doing. My question is what brought the serpent there? That is the attention we must pay. Don't worry about the serpent. I don't care about what demons are doing. What brought the demons there? What brought the a serpent there to coil this person around. There is something that is doing that is attracting these serpents around. Are you with me? And this is what these uh, 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 twisted serpents do. They will create a torturous burden. And you know, the word serpent in the Hebrew means nakash, whisper a spell. What this serpent does when it's coiling is to whisper curses and spell and make people to have, listen carefully, are you ready? You'll have a different narratives in your mind which is no longer the narrative of the Holy Spirit. And that is why the moment Eve opened her ears to what the serpent was talking, was the serpent screaming enough? No, the serpent was whispering so uh, soft enough that she was the one who passed the message to Adam. Adam did not even know what the conversation is all about. She said, you know what really God said? Why didn't he say, hey, stop speaking to my wife? It was such a whisper. It looked very deceiving. Maybe he's, uh, he was admiring the serpent because he didn't know. Being the first man, he didn't know that serpent could be a tool of the enemy. Because he is the one who named it, isn't it? But he didn't know. So when it came, he didn't know a serpent can become the toy for the whisper to take place. That is why he was caught off guard. Now God didn't even commend him on the off guard situation. Why did God judge them? Because you broke the words which I gave you. So you keep saying, God, but the serpent is there. But I did speak to you what to do. We are judged on our act of disobedience, not the mount of temptations. What you made is where we are judged. Because before it came, I've already spoken to you what to do, you see. My brothers and sisters, if we are crying for more glory, more grace, then there is responsibility to carry in the level of the Holy Spirit. And God is asking us to buckle up. Buckle up. A friend of mine was in charge. Uh, he went to, you know, in Singapore, we used to, uh, every male child, we have to go to the military for two years. It's compulsory. And so a friend of mine was in the Rangers course. And he said, you know, you know, when the fellas go into ranger cars, man, they, they carry uh, automatic bragging rights. <laughs> they will brag about it the whole table. There is nothing else they'll be talking about. You know what happened? So uh, we'll enjoy listening because these are real stories, right? So one of their bragging rights was when they were trained to be a sniper thrown into the jungle of Brunei. 
Singapore's training, oh, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't tell you where Singapore is training. We do have a base in America as well. A couple of bases in America. Okay? So anyway, the jungle of Brunei, and they will be thrown into an area. You have to have enough food for a month. And if you don't have the food, you've got to kill whatever animal you've got to do. But your job is to stay up on the tree. And your job is to hit the commander of the enemy camp that will come. But they don't tell you when. Your job is to only fire one shot to that one guy. Anybody who gives up within that month loses the cause. And they tell how they eat. Sometimes they don't eat. They have to urine in a, uh, uh, in a, in a plastic bag and tie it up because any slightest sound, you'll lose the cause. Wow. One shot, and that's the target. Tell me how many people can be trained as spiritual snipers just taking that one shot, and how many have that level of discipline in the spirit? That is why not everybody can be trained in that prophet's level a prophetic level where God is just telling you, don't be distracted. Your job is to take that shot. And then go into a stealth mode. Now I can give you scriptures how the prophets do this in the Bible. Your job is not to get distracted with any other thing. The job is to fulfill the call of the Father when he tells you. And that is why Jesus said, I came here to do what the Father told me. What the Father showed me is what I do. What the Father tell me to do is what I did. And nothing else doesn't really matter. How many of us can come into that level of surrender, you see? And the Lord wants to know. I will not pour my oil into vessels which are not worthy. And so today we cry out to Jesus. Help us to be worthy, O God. If not, they went the enemy. See, listen, are you ready? Yes. One of the training to overcome, he will allow the serpent to whisper to you. There's no overcoming without that. So we will be infected by the virus and see how you are overcoming. The same serpent that spoke to Eve will come and speak to you as well. Things that happen in the Bible will repeat itself again to you for, to pass the course. We will be infected with the spirit of sight uh, miscommunication. That dragon will come. That spirit will come. The Lord will test the church. Pass the test. Brother, I stand with you. Really? Listen to the whisper first, then we'll see. Are you with me? I didn't know you did that. Well, listen to the whisper. And then you decide which whisper are you listening the whisper of the Holy Spirit, the gentle whisper of the Almighty God, or the whisper of the enemy. And then the third is the other encouragement, uh, 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 other uh, uh, challenge that the Lord wants us to do. Notice that the challenge is becoming closer, stronger, and stronger. And this time, he says, the serpent that lies in the sea. And that's the challenge of Myrtle Beach now. The first two spirits are the ones that put the church at rest, create hallucination, that people will just turn around everywhere else so they will not pay attention to the real spiritual warfare. The third one is the one that lies in the sea. I was very surprised the way the spirit had the form of a human fish scales, all, almost you know, like a mermaid that we have seen. And the Lord holding it, squeezing. You'll find in the book of Revelation, in chapter 12 onwards, you'll find one third of the people of the earth will be swept by the tail of the dragon. So that is the backward attack. All the time you're paying attention to the hate. Some people are just that weak enough, even the tail can put them down. Are you with me? My brothers and sisters, all of us 
are called to fight in the different game that God has given to you. Protect, serve, and build the house of God. We've got to go through this identity. Oh, a lot of us have still got this identity crisis, who you are in Christ. If you can't even settle that, then what are you going to fight? You don't even know which army you're standing with after a while. That's how powerful the demonic spirits of hallucination is. I've never used in all these years of preaching demonic hallucination until what the Lord told me. How this poison will come in and you'll start wondering whether am I called by God? Am I really into what God is telling me? Am I really in the will of God? Are you with me? My brothers and sisters, if you and I are not sure, how will we raise up our sons and daughters to be sure about the call of God? Because those are the infections of the demonic spirits. They are infecting us and God is allowing us to be immune to their infection. Somebody say amen. amen. We are getting immune, you see. The more it's hitting you, the more you are immuning yourself to what God is about to do and the serpent that lies in the sea. You see, the word sea or ocean in the Bible always speaks of humanity. It doesn't speak of anything else. It speaks of humanity every time the Lord talks about. So there is a demon that lives in the sea that will try to bring carnality to glide itself through the circumstance of our life. To hold people away. And these are what we call the water spirits. It is suddenly in the present day, it has become very alive. You see, the problem with this church world is this. The moment God tells someone about some revelation about a demon, we now write a book about it, we teach about it, everybody get to know about it, and everybody is binding it, fighting it, without even knowing they are strong in the Lord or not. Without even knowing whether is that their assignment. Did God really tell you to go and fight that spirit? Oh no, but it's nice to know. Why are you picking up a demon for no reason, man? You already have a hard time fighting yours. You are dumb enough to fight another person's. And you're wondering why God is not with me. Because you're on the wrong side in the wrong enemy's camp. Can you go back to your side, please? Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say, brother, you are preaching just like Jesus. <laughs> are you with me? We have to realign ourselves to the will of the Father. Realign our work to the will of what Jesus said. If not, this anointing is about to give will not mature us at all. It will keep sipping us. It will keep leaving us. The Lord showed me the work of this seducing spirit, the serpent that lives in the sea. They hide, they sleep, they wrap around people to choke them. And the Lord showed me why pastors become very powerless in the churches. Because the work of Jezebel is to choke the work of the people. But you know what the Bible says? God will slay the dragon. That's what the sword is for. He said, I will punish her. I will slay her down and somebody shout. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'm just on my first verse. The first verse is that powerful. Are you enjoying the word of God or not? I am. I'm enjoying the word of God. Because God reveals the work of the enemy. Amen. You see, once we overcome. Once we overcome what the enemy is doing. Once we go through the course of all the three serpents that will try to come. We are aware. Paul said, let us not be unaware of the enemy's tactics. Isn't it? But you see, we want to be graduates of the book. Then when the real practice starts, we get involved in misargument, argument. You know what she said? You know what you said? You know what I said? You know what you said? And then we have WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. We publish it, everybody. Instead of standing with the house of God, yeah, we are standing with the serpent. We want to show the power of communication. The power of who said it first. 
The flesh comes in between and takes over now. Then you forgot you're a child of God. It takes more time to put down the fire in the church, killing one another, than the fires of the enemy. Are you with me? Amen. I have only one word for everybody who creates fires. Get out of the church. Full stop. Why are you arguing over and over again? It is easier to work with people who are solid hard rock from hell and teach them the word of God. They got more brokenness to grow up in Jesus because they appreciate the forgiveness of God. They appreciate the deliverance of God. They appreciate what God has done in their lives instead of those who have so self-righteous, they can't see anything anymore. Are you with me? My brothers and sisters, God wants to do so. So if I will overcome, verse 2, Isaiah chapter 27, verse 2 and 3. In that day, sing about a fruitful vineyard. Our vineyard will become fruitful. When I overcome the works of the enemy, when God raises up the myrtle beach, that is why armies cannot be raised up with one meeting. Armies cannot be raised up with three days prophet school. Army cannot be raised up with a little bit of teaching here, a little bit of teaching there. Armies cannot be raised up by listening to stories. Army can only be raised up when we learn the word of God, go down on our knees, and God will check whether your knees are bruised enough. That is why I encourage everybody to buy the prayer jeans. <laughs> Have you seen it? It's very popular. Jeans with a lot of holes. <laughs> wow, these are praying knees. God says, if you will overcome, then I will release an anointing for you to sing about a fruitful vineyard. I, the Lord, look at verse 3. I, the Lord, will watch over it. I will water it continually. I will guard it day and night. Then no one may harm it. Somebody say amen. That's the church I want to look out for. Because they have learned the task, they have win the enemy, they have gone through the cause, because you have stood with me, now I will make your vineyard fruitful. I will pour my spirit over it. I myself will water it. I myself will become your God day and night. And that no one may harm that ministry. Let's look out to become like that. And then verse 4, God is reminding his people, I am not angry with you. Look at chapter 27, verse 4. I have no wrath. In other words, I am not angry with you. Will that that I had thorns and briars to battle? I will march against them. I will burn them up together. I am not angry with you at all. I will read the NIV, how it reads. I am not angry. If only there were thorns and thistles confronting me, I will march against them in battle and I will burn everything on fire. What is God trying to tell us? Brother, those are Bible language. I know what he's saying. What is God trying to say? This is what God is saying. If anything that will hinder your growth, I will pull out those weeds because I am watching over you. You have passed the test. I've commanded you to become fruitful. I'm going to release a new anointing called worship because the Bible says sing to become a fruitful wine. That is why I mentioned to you, don't get distracted with your gifts and your discerning. When it's time to worship, worship the Lord. Don't ask for a word. Can you, can you give me a word, please? Can you tell me what's going to happen? What's the hurry, bro? Tonight, God can even speak to you. Why do you want to know now? I want to have a word because I want to exercise my gifts. Is that about you today? There will be one loud guy from Singapore. It is his day. Let him do his day. <laughs> you just enjoy the teaching of the word. Amen. You see, we have forgotten to play that role where, you know, it is less stressful and it's easy to receive. My brothers and sisters, can I, can I ask you this question? Do you think God owes you and me anything? No. Do you think he has to speak to you because you're fasting? No. You know why you can't hear? 
Because you're always in a stress mode. What is he God saying? What is he God saying? Can you just shut up and just enjoy worshipping? So that when he wants to speak, he speaks. And if he doesn't speak, let the name of God be praised. And you know what happens? You get to hear when you're taking a shower. (laughs) So I've given up telling God when to speak to me. He can speak to me when I'm hitting the shower. He can speak to me when I'm hitting my bed. He can speak to me while I'm eating. He can speak to me when I'm walking. He has the right to speak to me and interrupt me anytime. I don't have the right to tell him when to speak. I'm at his disposal. Even till today, I cry to Jesus and say, God, will you pull my shirt and say, come, son, I want to talk to you. Please help me. Give me that grace. We tell God what to do. I don't know from which world we have learned how to decree and declare. Are you sure you want to tell the king what to do? You know the scripture, it's an old scripture. Till today we have problems with that understanding. Concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Remember the King James Version? And so we have learned how to interpret, command me concerning the work of my hands. But that's not what it says. He said, concerning the work of my hands, do you dare to command me? Why are you telling me what I should be doing? Will you command me? That is the connotation in Hebrew. There's a question mark there. Because we are no longer reading the Bible, we are reading the sermon of another person, you see. So we have allowed the faith fathers to establish what they said has become the Bible now. We are no longer reading the Bible on our own. And so we are confused. He said, I got to declare. I was surprised when I was in a meeting and this lady is thinking, I declare to you God to do this. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to run away from that meeting. I said, God, that's not me. That is her. I do, don't get me in my, I don't even dare to decline decree to you. How dare will you command the king? Because we, we got excited with teachings, right? We think that if you don't declare and you don't decree, you won't get it. But Jesus said, I'm your father. Before you even ask, I know. How many times do you have your children telling, I declare and decree dinner on the table? (laughs) Come on, try that voice and opinion in your house. I want to see how you behave. You will go into revelation mode. Get out from my house! Huh? You are such a human, yet you have such a pride that who, how dare you stay in my house and declare and decree to you? How much more the heavenly Father who has given you the grace and the anointing, instead of using it the enemy, you're using it all for your own purpose. Why can't we just simply come to the trust of his name? He knows even before you are. So we want to settle. Let's realign ourselves and say, Father, realign me towards your will so that the enemy will not find a landing spot around me. Something, the only thing the devil cannot come close to you if all that you want is Jesus. He can never come close to you because he doesn't have that, you see. If you ask for money, the devil has got some money, man. If you ask for fame, he's got some fame. If you ask for the wealth of this world, he also has some wealth of this world. In fact, he can give you the power to be the top of this world. But if you ask for Jesus, he can't give you that. If you ask for souls, he can't give you that. If you, got, you ask for the stronger knees to bow, he doesn't know that. If you pray, God, give me humility, he's, that's alien language in the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says, seek it first the kingdom, so that our hearts will not be corrupted. Therefore, today we come with that purity, that this serpent has got no more bearing in us. Somebody say, Amen. 
flawed when he said, you are my fruitful vineyard, simply means he cares for us like a garden. I'm not good in gardening. I don't know why when I splash water, they die. They either don't like my face, I'm not sure. Sister Grace comes and takes care of some of the gardening works in church and in our house. That's amazing. Verse 5 says, this time you make peace with God. Are you, are you, hey, are you enjoying the word of God or not? Are you listening to me or listening to the word of God? Which one? Look at verse 5. Oh, thank you, Father. Verse 5 says, remember verse 4 says, if there is any torn thistles against you, I will burn it. If there is an army, I will march against them. If there is anything else come against you, I will burn it up altogether. And then verse six, uh, verse 5 says, Or let them take hold of my protection. Let them make peace with me. Now that is the power of intercession. Make peace with God. God is asking us tonight. Make peace with God. There is no reason why God has to touch the entire Myrtle Beach when his people's backs are facing him. So now the Lord is saying, take hold of me, make peace with me. Pray, seek the Lord. And then when you seek the Lord, verse 6 says, in the days to come, Jacob shall take root. Oh, look at that. Seek the Lord until you take root. <laughs> Build the Lord, build the work of God until it takes root. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. Look at the process now. The root, the shoots and the fruit. There is a process of time. We must invest and grow until we become what God wants us to become. But we are too hurried in the process. Let me give you a challenge which the Lord gave me years ago. When some ministries, when they invited me, they said, Stephen, don't preach, just prophesy. Your accuracy is that sharp. We have not seen people who are prophesying like you. But you just preach, the, uh, don't preach the word, just prophesy. I said, sorry, brother. If it's not for the word, I'm not coming. I don't need to admire my gift, man. Admire this, this one. This one. And I brought this matter to heaven when I was talking to the Lord. He lifted me up and he said, son, come, I want to talk to you. And the Lord asked me, how many books have I given to you? How many books do you think we have in the Bible? 66 books. So if a pastor is required to preach in all the books of the Bible instead of their favorite scriptures, if you take one book of Bible a year to preach to the congregation, how many years does it take to finish? Oh, it's a long task, bro. It's too long. Some will die even without finishing. Because some people came to ministry when they are 50 years old, right? So it's not going to happen. So let's take two years. Two books in a year. How many years? 33 years, <laughs> still a little bit long time. Three books in a year, how many years? 22. If I'm 50, by the time you finish what God told you to do, you are 72 now, you are still teaching the books of the Bible. How many pastors are here and what is your task? What's your commitment? Is the word. But how faithful have we done it? If as a man of God, you don't even time, have time for the word, what time do you want some more? I'm so busy reaching out to souls. But that's not your primary call. Your primary call is to be with him and represent him to the world. Why are you representing yourself? Why are you representing your ministry? Now what do we do when the church congregation comes? We throw dead bones. Because some congregations, some people are like dogs, man. You throw any bones, they will come and lick it and say, wow, it's nice. There's no even meat. And I'm saying it with politeness. Because God speaks to us in parabolic language. 
which we will understand better than scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? Are we treating the very people that we love with the bones of the scripture instead of giving them the meat of the word of God? The onus is upon us to spend time in the word. Now, that's not for everybody. For those of us who are preachers of the word. You have no other business than to spend time in the word and preach the meat of the word. So now ask yourself a question. Some of you are in the ministry for 30 years, 20 years, 25 years, or whichever year. How many books have you already completed? Because we always gravitate towards the easiest books. I remember one church, man, I was preaching, and I said, let's turn to Habakkuk. And the guy said, what Habakkuk? I said, what do you mean Habakkuk? Habakkuk is the book of the Bible. My pastor have never said it. And he was so naive and he said it so loud. And the pastor, he didn't even want to look at me now. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. There's something really wrong. Are you with me? And I'm not saying about if you are in church for six months. That fellow has been there for 20 years. Not once he heard the word Habakkuk ever in the preaching. I want to encourage us, let us go back to the word. The word will manifest Jesus. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then I and my Father will manifest ourselves to you. It's already 9.30. Timothy said it's 11. I think, did you advertise 11 o'clock? Oh man, that's, I, I won't go there. Because you guys are resting and listening. I'm the one who's working now. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I don't want to continue tomorrow so that we can hear a fresh word from the Lord, okay? Uh, uh, can we just finish it very quickly? So now the Lord says you must take root. And then verse 9 and 11, the Lord promises to purge the nation from her wickedness. Pagan altars will be crushed to dust. Look at that. Verse 9, therefore by this guilt, or look at that, measure by measure, verse 8, by exile you contended with them. He removed them with his what? Look at that. What? Rough wind. But you know what the Hebrew word says? Fierce breath. I didn't understand this until when I was in Japan about two or three years ago. The Lord said, he showed me the works of the enemy and he came and breathed out. <sighs> I was surprised. Why was he breathing out? I said, Father, I don't understand. Why, why are you breathing out? He said, go and study my breath. You will know what my breath will be. Even the breath of God carries the power of heaven. No wonder he wants to teach us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, he trains my fingers for war. Every movement and gesture, there is power to it. Are you with me? He removed with his fear a breath uh, 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 in the day of the east wind. Therefore, by this, the guilt of Jacob will be atoned for. When does this happen? When we overcome that serpent. When we are restored in worship. We are restored in the vineyard. We are restored in the world. Then he now says, now I will remove the guilt of Jacob to be atoned for. This will become the full fruit of the removal of his sin. When he makes all the stones of the altars like chalk stones crushed to pieces. Look at that. All the pagan altars. You see, the problem is that these are latest issues that I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not smoking the church, man. That's not my, my business. Jesus died for his church. I'm not going to smoke it out. But I think you can go demon hunting instead of building your altars. You can go around destroying the altars of the enemy when, when the enemy looks at you don't have an altar at all. When you don't have the altars of the fire of God, you can't even destroy the altars of the enemy. We have paid attention of destroying altars all the time, but God is paying attention whether your altar is burning with my fire. And so I want to encourage us today 
Let God restore us. Let God purge all the wickedness. In verse 11, and I feel very strongly, it's a last trumpet call that is coming to Myrtle Beach. And I kept trying not to say about it over and over. I try not to say. But again and again, the same thing keep coming. Look at verse 11. When it boughs are dry, they are broken. Women come and make a fire of them. And look at the next line. For this is a people without discernment. Therefore, he who met them will not have compassion on them. He who formed them will show them no favor. What does that mean? When my people will become foolish again, now my mercy will be withdrawn. Because his word has been set out. Verse 13 says, a great trumpet will be blown and the presence of God will come and people will worship the Lord. Look at that in the last verse. In that day a great trumpet will be blown, those who were lost in the land of Assyria and those who were driven out of the land of Egypt will come and worship the Lord on the holy mountain at Jerusalem. What does that mean? When the great trumpet will be blown in Myrtle Beach, there will be a revival of evangelism. There will be a revival of souls coming back to the house of God. There will be a revival of all those who are backslidden, hiding in the church. And there are many people who don't want to come to church because they are so broken. They are so disappointed. God will gather them and they will form up house fellowships, new fellowships. It will just suddenly be a birthing process. They will not look like new comers. They are the old timers restored by the mercies of God. And somebody say, Amen. All these blessings are going to come upon Myrtle Beach. If today we will stand in the gap, I wanted to ask you to stand up with me just for 10 minutes if you will press on in the spirit with me. Is that okay? Today we are not going to get distracted with any other gift or prophecy about anything more. Let's stand in the gap and say, God, let your will be done. Let's stand in the gap and say, God, realign my heart, realign my calling. Realign my, the call that you have in my life. Remove what it is not important. I used to be young and I think stupid. Now I have grown up. Help me to mature. Amen. Let me ask matured prayers. No more silly. No more little baby type of prayers. Are you with me? Let's get out of that. You are with me. What must I do now? Amen. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Come on, fill this place with prayer right now. Ribarama Shende. Prochalagadimarabateya. I plead the blood of the Lamb. I plead the blood of the Lamb upon Myrtle Beach, upon the house of God, upon the churches that are gathered here. Preliminary me baratai kamuroto remi sabba. Shabala mandulo prakali tola kadiba remende. I see many churches in the spirit now. Now I don't know who they are. I've never been here before. I don't know any name of the church before. But I see this church or this or many other church like this are empty. And I've asked the Lord, why are they empty? The Lord says that some of these churches want to do a church plan. They place some church plans to have the name, how many churches they have. For the sake of the name, but they are not investing in the spirit. Therefore, though the building is there, the places are there, my glory is not inside. Kabotune sabalendo, sharaba kababa rieto. Come on, do reminde yaha. Kanda rabaku rebisanda. Come on, somebody stand in the right gap right now. Somebody lift up your voice of intercession. Somebody, oh, shake the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I am the ruling king of Myrtle Beach in Jesus' name. Shoroburia mande, pulogadiba rapo, kanda rasora mende. I see the sword of the Lord in many men of God whom God has given to you. Now I want to encourage you. Bring the sword before the Lord. He will sharpen it for you. Mari Tologadi Biribi. Pulaka Shande. Pando Rikabahanda. We pull down the power of the gliding serpent in the name of Jesus. The power of the coiling serpent in the name of Jesus. The power of the monster in the sea in the name of Jesus. And find you to go elsewhere. You have no power. 
Because Jesus, you told me today, even the birthing, teething of the child is as powerful to bite against the power of the enemy. So I pray for a new anointing to come and rest on your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and ask the Lord to fill you with a new anointing, to fill you with a new power, to fill you with a new authority, to fill you with a new passion for the word, to fill you with a new passion for the fire of prayer. Remendi ya bahaiso. Kinaminda barate ya. Sanda bariminda ya hakono mundo. Bratule minda reso kone minde. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bolomenderi biriamon darasenderi.